Hey guys, it's time for Money Mondays brought to you in partnership with Proven Wealth. I know a lot of you have been patiently waiting on this one, my assessment of the Wigton Wind Farm IPO. If you still don't know what an IPO is, watch episode 7 of Money Mondays, everything you need to know about IPOs. Last week I gave you the heads up that the prospectus was dropping very soon and sure enough it came out that same evening. So you know, I've always got the scoop. Now I've read the prospectus and I've been talking to people about it all week, getting different viewpoints, asking questions, seeking clarity, all so that I can bring you a very informed and rounded perspective. First here's a recap of the basics. The government is selling all of Winton, Wigton Wind Farm. They've divided it into 11 billion shares and they're selling those shares at 50 cents each. The minimum investment is just 1,000 Jamaican dollars. They've also reserved 2.2 billion shares for public sector workers at the same 50 cents a share and they're using a bottom-up approach to allocate those shares. That means they're giving priority to small investors. Often you hear about an IPO opening and closing in minutes, but this time they're going to keep it open the full time, April 17, that's this Wednesday until May 1. But you should still get your application in as early as possible. They've actually already started taking applications. So I'm going to use last week's episode, how to decide if you should invest in a company as the template for assessing this particular prospectus. The first thing to look at is the business overview. Wigton Wind Farm makes its money by generating electricity from wind and selling it to JPS. 6% of all the electricity in the country comes from Wigton Wind Farm. They're the largest of four renewable energy companies in Jamaica and the largest wind farm in the English-speaking Caribbean. In terms of governance, they have a new private sector board appointed in January with a good mix of skills in energy, engineering, finance, business and law. And the general manager, Earl Barrett, has been highly praised for his competence and skill. Now, the industry and outlook for Wigton are both very good as well. The government has a policy to increase the use of renewable energy a lot. Right now, the country gets about 18% of its energy from renewable sources, solar, wind, hydro. Government policy is to increase that to 50% by 2030. So in the near future, they're going to be putting out requests for proposals for more renewable energy projects, and Wigton is in a very good position to capitalize on that. They say they're ready to build Wigton Phase 4 as soon as the government says go. But of course, they'd have to bid on the contract and win, so it's not guaranteed. Moving on to their historical performance. Wigton made $826 million in net profit last year. That's four times more than they made the year before, a lot of which has to do with Wigton Phase 3 opening up. They've continuously operated at a profit, but they have a lot of debt. $6.4 billion because they had to borrow heavily to build the wind farm at a time when the private sector didn't believe in it and nobody wanted to invest. Now, of course, everyone is salivating to get a piece. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions about this high level of debt and whether this should be a major concern. I don't think so because they're making more than enough money to pay back the debt. However, the debt situation will affect your dividend payments should you choose to invest, and I'll come back to that point later. Now, last week I told you that if a company wants your money, they should tell you why and be very specific about what they plan to do with it. In this prospectus, that was actually quite vague. If fully subscribed, the government will earn $5.5 billion from this IPO. But all it says in the reasons for sale is to diversify the ownership base, encourage local ownership, and provide funds to the PCJ. It doesn't actually say what the money is going to be used for. So I asked the finance minister, Dr. Nigel Clark, straight up, and he admitted to me that the government plans to use the money to pay down debt, not Wigton's $6 billion debt, mind you, general government of Jamaica debt. So should you be concerned that they're not reinvesting in the company? Well, let me explain it this way. This is not your typical IPO, where a company is selling a portion of its shares to the public, but still keeping some for itself. The government is selling the entire company. Now, if you sell your car, should the new owner expect you to continue buying gas for it? No, it's theirs now, and the same applies here. 
the government is basically cashing in and they're under no obligation to use any of the proceeds to reinvest in the company. Not like in most IPOs where the company is only selling a portion of its shares but still keeping a stake in it. Now let's look at the risks and there are a few. Suppose the government doesn't implement this energy plan for 50% renewables by 2030. That would impact Wigdon's future possible earnings. Suppose there's a really bad hurricane or earthquake and the wind turbines get mashed up. Suppose breeze just stop blow, I mean climate change is real. The biggest risk though is that they only have one customer, JPS, to whom they sell all their energy. They have three agreements with JPS that guarantees JPS has to buy their energy. But the first of those agreements ends in just five years. So suppose JPS doesn't renew it, that could have a major impact on their earnings. I think that's unlikely though because Wigton is right now one of the cheapest sources of energy available to JPS. But a lot could happen in five years. On the opportunities side now, there's a lot of potential too. Wigton phase four, if it happens, would see their capacity expanding by 54%, so profits would increase a lot too. They're also not limited to wind energy. They're actually a renewable energy company, so they could technically go into solar or hydro. And as Energy Minister Fable Williams pointed out to me, as a private company, Wigton is also free to expand outside of Jamaica. They can bid on renewable projects in other countries. That's a huge opportunity. So the big question, should you invest your money in Wigton? Everyone I've asked has said yes. This is a good buy and they're all confident the stock price will go up fairly quickly. I think so too. The lead broker Mayberry Investments has a history of IPOs being oversubscribed. Now being oversubscribed simply means that people have applied for more shares than are available. Let's say for example, I'm selling 100 shares in my company. The company is doing very well, so a lot of people want to buy shares. And I get applications for 200 shares. It's oversubscribed because I only have 100 to sell. So there's a demand for 100 more that drives up the share price because those who didn't get are going to try to buy from those who did get. And of course, they'll have to offer a better price than the 50 cents it's selling for in the IPO. I do think this IPO is going to be oversubscribed. If you look at Wisinka's IPO in December 2017, Wisinka was seeking to raise $6 billion. That's more than Wigton is seeking to raise. And Wisinka was oversubscribed. They got offers totaling $17 billion. And Wisinka didn't have the level of public education that Wigton is coming with. The government wants thousands of small investors to buy Wigton, so they have Mayberry doing road shows. I've heard radio broadcasts about it, TV commercials. They're really going hard, so the demand will be there. Now, if you invest, how much should you expect to earn? Okay, so there are two ways of earning money from an investment in stocks. One is dividend payments. Companies pay out dividends usually every year if they make a profit. However, because of its debt situation, Wigdon has decided they're not going to pay out more than 25% of their net profits to shareholders, at least for now, because they want to make sure that they use most of the profit to pay off their debt first, which is wise. I've done some quick calculations based on the net profits they've made last year. If you had invested $10,000 in Wigton based on 25% of last year's profits, you'd get a dividend payout of $375. Now that's not a lot, and usually dividends aren't a whole lot. Where you really make your money on the stock market is when the price of the stock appreciates. Like I was explaining earlier, if there's a heavy demand for the stock, the price is gonna go up after the IPO. I've looked at an analysis by Proven Wealth who have assessed the shares worth at between 73 and 86 cents each. So the 50 cents price is a bargain. Now let's say the stock price appreciates to the more conservative number 73 cents. If you invest $10,000 in Wigton, you'd be able to sell those shares for $14,600. Of course, this isn't guaranteed to happen, but you can use all the information that I've given you to determine the likelihood that this stock will do well. So if you're convinced and you want to know how to buy, watch episode 6 of Money Mondays on IGTV or YouTube, How to Invest on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Proven Wealth is also an authorized seller. Now here's your digital credit giveaway the last time I'm doing this. 2 1 2 9 4 1 0 5 2 9 0 2 6 go
not doing anymore. That's it for Money Mondays. I'm Kalila Reynolds. See you next week.